Hey everybody, it's me Margaret with a long requested tutorial for this hat that has the camel stitch ribbing, the one that makes it so warm on the ears. The reason it has taken me so long to get this up is because I filmed it a long time ago and lost the footage, but I found it on an old external hard drive. So without further ado, here it is. <laughs> So you'll want to start by printing a copy of your pattern. I'll put the link in the description box below. This is actually the pattern in the making. We're going to do it together on this tutorial and I'll be able to see anything that I need to adjust as I teach so that it will reflect what I'm saying in this video when you print it at home. So let's start by looking over here at the materials. I have written that you'll need an H or 5 millimeter crochet hook or whatever you prefer to use with worsted weight yarn, whatever you're most comfortable with with the yarn that you choose. And you might say, Margaret, no, we won't get the right size if we use something different. Yes, you will. I'm going to show you how to do that. We're using worsted weight yarn for this project. And of course, you'll need the basics like a tapestry needle and scissors, measuring tape. And then I thought about this after I had originally typed it, a stitch marker. We do need that. Now, as we continue on here, we've got a couple of notes. This one tells us that sizing this pattern correctly depends on your measurements matching the chart included at the end of this pattern rather than traditional stitch count and gauge. Yes, this is my favorite method with crochet hats and I'm going to teach it to you if you haven't already seen it in another one of my tutorials. Another note here is that most of this hat is done without joining each row to create a seamless look. So that's good too. Now here's a picture of what we're going to create and with traditional hats with crochet we're going to start top down. So what we'll do is create a tiny little circle and we'll increase and increase and increase until we get it the right width that we need for the size that we're creating. That's typical. So we've got our supplies, we're ready to get started. To begin the increase rounds, this is what we do. To determine how many increase rounds to do, first decide on the size you want and then refer to the chart at the end of this pattern and three measure your flat circle diameter and stop the increase rounds when the desired measurement is reached now if you are not familiar with doing this let me give you a quick rundown on the second page of this pattern is a chart now if you would like a more permanent version of this chart a larger one to print out for your crochet bag or whatever I've got you a little quick link right here that will take you to that but in the meantime I've included one in this pattern so it'll be handy dandy for quick reference now here's what we're going to do let's decide right off the bat what size are we making I am going to make one for a toddler one to three years old and as we look at each column we have information the head size 18 to 21 inches the hat size will be a little bit less than that, so it'll be nice and snug on the little head and it won't blow off in the wind. Then we have a hat height, which is the measurement from crown to ear, which is six and a half inches. And then we'll have what's called the flat circle diameter, 5.5 inches. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Let's get started. You might notice some different colors here. One of my tricks for learning to read a pattern is to do each section a different color. So you see three colors, you've got three things to do in round one. We're going to chain two. We're going to work eight half double crochets in the first chain. And then we'll place a marker in the first half double crochet. So just like any typical hat pattern, you'll start with a slip knot and you can make that any way you want to. The pattern told us to chain two and then we're going to do eight half double crochets. That's yarn over, insert into that first chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all of them. That's a half double crochet. And remember that third thing on the first round told us to place a stitch marker in that first stitch and that's what we did. So there's one. Now let's continue on. Two, three, this is seven. Still, look how large my opening has become. 
you can fix that by just giving it a little tug. And here's eight, the eighth half double crochet. All right, let's double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, we're good to go. Now let's check our directions. Round two tells us do not join, but rather start the next row in the first half double crochet of the last row and place two half double crochet in each stitch around being sure to place a marker in the first stitch of the round. We're going to do that with every round because we're not joining joining each row. It's not so easy to see where the first stitch is, so we're going to always place a marker on the first stitch of each round. Just keep that in mind. So, the first thing we're going to do, two half double crochet in each stitch around. Since we marked our first stitch, then we know exactly where we're going to begin. So let's take that marker out for a moment, kind of keep your finger, keep your eye on where you need to be. And then we're going to do two half double crochet in that first stitch. There's one, there's two. Now before you forget, go ahead and put this marker back where it needs to be. Alright, that was the second stitch and here was the first. So mark that. And now we're going to continue all around doing two half double crochets in each stitch and I'll meet you back right here. So I've got one more stitch to do because this is the first one. So one, two. Okie dokie, let's check the instructions. Okay, at the end of round two, we should have 16 stitches, which you can count on your own. If you don't, you go back and you make sure you have two double crochet in every one of those stitches. Easy to fix. Round three, we do one half double crochet in the first stitch, two half double crochet in the next. Repeat until the end of the round, so we'll have 24 when we finish. So we go one half double crochet in the first, two in the second, one in the first, two in the second. So we'll remove this first stitch marker and we'll put one half double crochet in that first stitch and two in the next one. One, two, one in this one and two in this one. And I'll continue along like that till we get back. Oh, I better mark here. There was two, there was one, there was two, and here is the one. Oop. So I'll meet you back around. So you can see I just ended this row. Let's see what's next. Round four, we're going to do one half double crochet in the next two stitches and two at the next. So first we went one then two, one then two, one then two, all the way around. Now we're going to do two then two, two then two, two then two, all the way around. And again I've put the number of stitches in parentheses here so you can count to make sure you haven't missed anything. Easy to fix because you can recognize the pattern. So let's go on with round four which is one, one, two, and then next stitch. One, one, two, and the next stitch. So I'm removing my marker and I'm doing the pattern. One, one. I better put my marker before I forget. Not this one, but this one. And then two in the next. One. So I'll continue on with that pattern. One in the next one, one in the next one, and then two in this one. And I'll meet you back around. I'm coming up on my last stitch right here where I have to put a double well, that's not the right word. I'm putting two half double crochets in one stitch. There we go. And then here we are at the starting point. 
and then you can count and you should have 32 stitches. Now round five, we're continuing the same type of pattern. One half double crochet in the next three stitches and two in the next. So we'll go one, 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 two in the next stitch, one, 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 two in the next stitch. So everything you learned before, just you just build on it. So there's single, and if you want to go ahead and replace that while you're thinking about it. Single, that's the second single. I'm saying the wrong thing. When I say single, I mean it's standing alone. So it's a half double crochet alone in its stitch. So it's got one, one, one by itself, and then we do two together. Half double crochet there with a partner. Okay, so let's continue on doing one, 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 two together in the same stitch. We have to get two in this last stitch. One, two. Okie dokie. Now, see there's our flat circle. Now if we look at our pattern, we don't have any more increase rounds written right here, but we do have a note. It says add or subtract increase rounds until your flat circle diameter matches the size indicated on the chart end of the pattern. So let's see what that looks like. So I need to check. I'm doing a small size, so I need to check and see if my toddler size hat measures 5.5 .5 inches in the flat circle diameter. So I have it here. I get out my handy dandy tape measure. And I'm measuring from end to end across. Look, only 4 inches in diameter, so I have to keep going. But I don't have any more rounds written. It just told me I have to keep doing increase rounds. What does that mean? I took the liberty of reprinting these instructions. See, they end at round five, right? So in our heads, we have to just know what comes next. We can see the pattern. We did one half double crochet in the first stitch, two at the next. Then we did one, two with two in the next. One, two, three with two in the next. So it stands to reason that the next pattern would be four, two in the next, and followed by five and two in the next. And you would continue doing this increased pattern until your flat circle diameter measures what it needs to measure. Very simple. So now that I understand what's going on, I don't even have to look at the pattern until my flat circle diameter measures what it needs to measure. So there's one stitch of the new row, two, three, four. And then we put two in the next stitch. One, two. And I'll continue on for that row. And then measure. So I just finished that row where I did four by themselves with two in the middle and I'm measuring and I still have not achieved my five and a half inches, so I have to go another round, but I know what to do. I did one, two, three, four with two in the same stitch. This time I'll do five with two in the same stitch. Okay, so I finished another row. Let's measure. Dun, da, da, I did it. Okay, so now I'm through with my increases and I can just put one half double crochet in every stitch around. I don't have to increase any more. But wait, let's think just a minute. What if you're making the same size I am? You finish this row and yours is not five and a half inches. Do you panic? Absolutely not. All it means is that your gauge is different. You could be using a thinner worsted weight yarn than this Vanna's Choice. Uh, Karen Simply Soft, for example, is a much thinner yarn than this, even though it calls itself a number four worsted. Or maybe you're using a G hook, or maybe you just crochet tighter than I do. Doesn't matter. 
as long as you follow this measurement and keep crocheting, keep doing your increases until you get the proper flat circle diameter measurement, your hat's going to fit just fine. Now looking back at the last thing on the first page of our pattern, it tells us about these non-increase rounds. We're not going to be putting two in any stitches, therefore they're called non-increases. We're going to complete half double crochet rows until the hat measures two to three inches shorter than the desired hat height. My general rule is that this brim right here, I would like it to cover the ears. So consider the ears of the person you're doing it for. And if they have teeny, teeny little ears like on a toddler, then you might want to do just two inches. If they have an adult ear, you might want to do three inches. Or maybe you just flat out like the look of a wider thing. It doesn't matter. Just keep that in mind to stop doing all this part when you are two to three inches or whatever you choose before you're the end of your hat. Well, how do you know what that is? Remember your chart. I'm doing for the one, two, three year old, and my hat height should be 6.5 inches. I think I'll just do it three inches for good measure. So I subtract three inches from this. And so I'm going to do half double crochet in this red until my hat measures 3.5 inches from here to here. That's the hat size that I'm choosing to do. So you fill in whatever you want to do. Right now we're going to continue putting one half double crochet in every stitch around until we reach the desired height, which in my case will be 3.5 inches. Now I don't need to move this every single time. I'm going to put it about right here since I'm not messing with increases anymore. And I'm just going to continue on putting one stitch in every stitch around until I have gotten my three and a half inches and then I'll come back and show you. So I'm back. I have done a few more rows. I feel like it's time to measure. So what I'm going to do is fold my work in half. Let me pull this out a little bit and find the tippy tippy top which is that hole that should be closed. And I'm going to measure from there down. And it looks like this last row that I did, let me make sure that's right, ends at 4 inches. But it looks like that previous row was exactly what I wanted, the 3 and a half inches. So, I said, I read something about tapering. Let's check that out. Our instruction said for the non-increase rounds to complete half double crochets until hat measures two to three inches shorter than the desired hat height. Remember we did the math, I came out with three and a half inches. Be sure to taper down the last 12 stitches to help level off the spiral. And let's see what that means. So I've got some, some clay here, a clay snake. And what we're doing is we're making a spiral with our hat like this. So when we come to the end, our work is going to look like this, and we don't want it to. So when I say we need to taper it, what we're going to do is we're going to shorten our yarn, shorter stitches, so that it will eventually taper right in to the circle, like that. Let me show you how to do that. So, in the case of my little hat, this measured this row right here, the ending row, measured four inches, but where I want to be measured three and a half. So if I taper off like the clay into that, it should be right. Level off the spiral. This is the way I do it. I go back 12 stitches and I'll do nine single crochet because we've been doing half double crochet. Let's go down a little bit and do nine single crochet and then three slip stitches and fasten off and see how that looks. So here's my work. I'll rip back 12 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'm going to hold my fingers right here on 13 and just rip back to there. Now, Let's do, we've done nothing but 
half double crochet. So now here we're going to do nine single crochet. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and three slip stitches. One, oh wait, that's not right, two, and then three. All right, let's see how that looks. Oh, you see how it smushed down exactly like the clay? Let's, let me turn it to the right side so we can see. So you see how it so we smushed the yarn down. We smushed this whole row down to blend into this row right here. Alright, so now this measures, or it should measure, three and a half inches as I calculated earlier. And it's pretty close. So now I can proceed with the brim. Okay, so the instructions told us that after we did the taper, we need to fasten off because we're not using this color anymore. Now I like to work with my hat inside out. Some people crochet the other way, but I crochet with my, the, the good part of the hat is going to be on the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and sew in this end. Some people may want to crochet over their tail. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to get it out of the way. So, I'm just going to secure this end and sew it in. Okay, so now you can't see it. Alrighty. Now while you know that there are endless variations you could do with these color combinations here, I'm going to show you this exact version, the one color here and the ending solid color like this. So, following the instructions for the brim, we're going to attach a new color, chain one, half double crochet in the back loop only of each stitch, and then we're going to join to the top of the first half double crochet. We're going to ignore that chain one. I use my chains, my chain ups as mere fillers. I never connect to the top of my chain. I just ignore them. And usually I do one shorter than what is typically called for. And so that's why this may look unusual to you. So attach the new color, chain one, half double crochet in the back loop only. Okay, so we need to attach our yarn, and because we're going in the back loop only for this round, I'm going to attach it in the back loop only as well. And the instructions said to chain one, half double crochet in the back loop only. I am crocheting over the tail at this point. You don't have to, you can sew it in later if you'd like. But this is a great technique for those of us who don't get excited about sewing the tails in later. Now I'm coming up on the end of this tail. And something I like to do is to go ahead and pull it tight like you're gathering the hat. That gives you more to hold on to as you're going around. See, I got a little bit left. I'm going to pull tight one more time. Clip that tail. Pull straight. Make sure it's well hidden. Okay. And now I'll continue on. Back loop only. Half double crochet all the way around. And when you get over here to those slip stitches where when we were tapering down, and they can get kind of tight. So just beware that's what's going on. And they also turn themselves forward. So make sure you pull that up looking for that stitch.
And this is where I sewed the end in so it looks a little funny. So just make it look right. Okay, now it said to join to the top of the first stitch. This is that chain. So I want to join right there. Ta-da! I need to add a little note to the pattern. Let's say you have a bunch of scrap yarn lying around and you wonder if you have enough. Well, I just figured out that for a half double crochet row, you need 10 times the circumference of your hat. So this measures around one. I'll do nine more times. If I have nine, if I have 10 lengths around, I have enough for one half double crochet row. Now, because we're doing this hat right here, I am going to go ahead and fasten off, but I make a little note here. You don't have to if it's if you want to keep going with the same color. So moving on to this portion of the brim right here, subsequent rows, attach a new color if desired, and I do desire. We're going to chain one, and we're going to half double crochet camel stitch in each stitch around, and do not join. We're going to do that same continuous thing so we won't have a seam. We're going to continue until we reach the desired hat height, which in my case was, remember, check your little thing, 6.5 inches. And this is going to look familiar. Be sure to taper down the last 12 stitches to help level off the spiral. Now if you didn't like the way that looked, you can join every row. Ignore this. Do not join. Do join. And that will give you an even edge. I subscribe to the theory of it'll never be noticed on a galloping horse. Those of you who are a stickler for detail, you probably want to join in the back. I will do anything to keep from having a seam in the back, but that's totally up to you. So which loop are you supposed to be picking up? Well, these V's are the top of the stitch. They're the normal places where you stick the crochet under both of those V legs. But in this case, you want to reach around to the back and there'll be another loop all by itself. You want to grab that one. This picture is included in your pattern too. Let's deal with this join at the end. I am going to start where it's nice and clean so you can tell. See, this is where we would normally crochet, like right in there. But if we flip it forward instead, you'll see this little thing right there. And that's the bar that we want. So I'm going to go ahead and attach my color right here. like that. The instruction said to chain one and then to do camel stitch which is half double crochet in that back loop like that. So there's one. For some reason this hook is squeaking and it never squeaks. And I think it was because I put lotion on my hands earlier but you would think it would be wiping off. Alright, now look what's happening. Do you see how this row is forcing this row to be forward like that? See it? And then we did back loop only, so we have this nice little row right here. Little line that created a border for us. So our camel stitch kind of looks like a row of crochet that is lying on its side. Okay, complete that and then let's get to that messy join and figure out what to do. Right, we're coming around to where the join creates problems and now you understand why I hate to do the joins for this. Alright, so we have to just kind of figure out which bar to choose that's going to give us a similar look. Alright, let's see. It's hard to tell you which one. You're going to have to look at your join. There. Okay. I brought it around. That looks pretty good. Right? Now, my instructions say don't join. Keep going. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, let's see. This is 
right there. Do you see it? That little tail, that's the chain where we attached. So I'm going to go in right here. And I will have a gap, but I did not crochet over my tail, and I can fix that when I go to sew it in. Oops, I didn't notice I had two loops still on my hook. As it turned out, it didn't make much difference in the end. I didn't even notice the mistake. I'll show you later. So now I'm going to go ahead and continue doing camel stitch all the way around until my hat height reaches 6.5 because that's the size that I chose. I'll meet you back around when I'm finished. Okie dokie, I'm at six and a half again. I'm going to pull back the 12 stitches so that it will blend in. And you know, these measurements are estimates, by the way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Hold my finger at 13 and pull back. I do charity hats, so I'm not trying to fit anyone individually. I don't, I don't have any measurements to go by. All right, so I'm doing the taper now. So instead of doing half double crochet camel stitch, I'm going to do single crochet camel stitch, which is the exact same thing. You go into that back bar, but you do a single stitch. Okay, so that's two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then we do the three slip stitches. One, two, three, and fasten off. And don't forget when you go to sew the top end to Pull it snugly so it stays closed. And then again, to keep it closed, I like to catch it once and go loop back around the same stitch and then start hiding it. And that makes it stay nice and tight within the stitches. Turn it right side out. And here it is, the finished project. And don't forget that this is a super project for using up scraps of yarn. Choose a neutral color for the main part and that makes the combinations endless. Have fun and thanks for watching.